What can a vibration platform do for you? And when should you consider it? It's a Q&A with the Ask the Menopause Fitness Expert podcast coming at you. I'm Deborah Atkinson. This is Flipping 50, where I address your top struggles and concerns, and I share what to eat, how to move, and how to change your mindset so you can get the energy and the vitality that you want, need, and deserve in this second and better half. And today I'm answering a listener question who wrote in and asked, can you offer thoughts about a vibration platform for menopause women in a podcast or a blog? So thanks, Susan, for asking. And if you are listening and you have a question, you can ask that in the Flipping 50 Insiders group in Facebook, and that's Flipping 50 Insiders or at the bottom of any podcast at flipping50.com, all words spelled out, forward slash podcasts, where you'll find all the episodes and really that are almost all written out like a blog. So if you prefer to read or read in addition to listening, it's all there for you. So my first response and thoughts for Susan's question was, I asked for context because my response is generally not going to be about selling a tool. For instance, somebody will often ask, what are your thoughts on TRX or suspension training? And again, it's always going to come back to, you've got to answer for me, what's your highest priority? So what is the problem that you want this tool to solve? So rather than going shopping, what we want to do is make the list before we go to the store, right? (laughs) That's how you end up without the chips in the cart. And the same is true here. So what are your highest priorities? What is it that you're trying to accomplish? And do you have any obstacles or limitations in accomplishing that? So I'm in that critical period. She told me in response, Susan, this is, that you speak of being one year into menopause. I completed your stronger program and am weight training twice a week. I was just wondering if you found this a useful tool in addition to your program. So my response now is you hit the nail on the head. So Susan really got it. So if you're able to strength train, it is the number one thing. So if we were lining things up and saying, what's the number one way to improve your bone density, meaning either we stop losses, we slow losses, or if you're taking a supplement after menopause, it is possible to add bone density and increase. But which one of those is our target? And if it is indeed bone density, as opposed to building muscle, getting toned, shaping up, reducing cellulite, getting active at all. There's so many reasons why women are exercising, even in menopause. I do think that for all of us to age optimally, increasing your lean muscle mass and maintaining or increasing your bone density are two of the biggest priorities that we really should all have. For some, it's maybe not increasing lean muscle mass, but it's increasing strength. But we come in pretty close to those being the highest priorities. So Strength training, number one, for osteoporosis or improving, maintaining bone density, it's going to be the number one thing you can do. If you were unable or limited with motions or by joints, then the vibration would be better than nothing. Yes. It's a matter of, is it worth the expense, really? Or if it's available to you in a gym and you already belong, by all means, use it if you've got the time. But don't substitute strength training time for that. So you've also got to consider if you're thinking about doing it at home, is it worth the investment? So I think if you would want to look at that as a home investment, and if money was no object, then okay, great. But for most of us, it is. Even if the money's there, do we want to spend it? But what you would not want to do is just get something that had minimal bells and whistles and really wasn't enough stimulation. So do your homework if you're looking at using them. If you're looking at an industrial level 
platform that's already at your gym, then it's perfect time to use it either in a warm up or in a cool down or to actually do some exercises on it. They're also very useful for injuries. So if you, for instance, had elbow tendonitis, you've incurred an injury from running, you can actually use the vibration to stimulate accelerated healing. So different uses for it, for sure, and can help with reduction of cellulite. Who knew? So thinking of what else are you able to do, it is still passive. Now you can do some movement on it, but if we look at an active endeavor versus a passive, an active endeavor is always going to win. So I would say the vibration platforms are best for those with limited mobility and movement and or who are willing to use the vibration while they're lifting or doing some balance activities or who have the time and want an additional boost. So testing is the challenge. So results wise, the tests that have been done and studies that have been done on vibration platforms are a little bit limited. Testing your bone density pre and post use, you won't actually know what's causing your improvement if you do improve without some research. So on large groups of women in menopause, right? So we've got to get narrow on what what we want the studies to be doing number one, strength training alone. Number two, doing platform, vibration platform alone. And number three, doing both in comparable status subjects. So again, women in menopause who've got low bone density. So what's the difference and who's the clear winner? And then of course, there's always going to be a fourth just a control group, not doing anything, but having osteoporosis. So the challenge in, in seeing any scientific evidence is going to take a long time to have large groups of women with osteoporosis or low bone density that we could take and separate into a large enough cohort doing strength training alone, a large enough cohort doing the vibration platform alone, large enough doing both, and then doing nothing who had the greatest improvement or what was the greatest change? That would be the question. And that would be the study that you should fund if you have the the opportunity to do that. So I hope that that offers a little bit of insight. There's certainly nothing negative or wrong with a vibration platform. It just should never be a substitute for literal movement through range of motion to stimulate the bones from all sites. But otherwise, if you add it as an extra, absolutely. It's just now for you looking at, is it worth the investment, whether that's time or money or both? I hope that was helpful. If you're listening and you have a question for short answers and these short Q and A's that we try and put in as a second podcast each week, generally You can just leave your questions below the show note, flipping50.com forward slash podcast, or join us at Facebook in the Flipping 50 Insiders group. What are you waiting for? Let's start Flipping 50 today.